the story of the elephant who looked after his mother. The Bodhisattva is often reborn as an elephant. In these stories, he's always very loyal, steadfast and kind. When he's an elephant, he seems to demonstrate the virtue of forbearance or kanti, a cheerful endurance that wins in the end. In this story, the Bodhisattva is a very beautiful young white elephant. He lives with a herd of 80,000 others. But his mother is blind. So every day he goes out and he picks lovely moist fruits for her and sends them back with the other elephants. But the problem is they always snitch it and eat the fruit for themselves. So one night he decides to take action. Leading his mother behind him, he goes to the mountains and he finds the perfect spot. It's a cave where they can live with a lake just nearby. Every day he liked to splash in the water and have some fun there. And they had plenty of fruit around to eat. He could just stretch his trunk up and pull it down. Now there was a certain forester who lived in Benares nearby, who was wandering in the forest but got very lost. And for a long time he roamed the forest and he couldn't see his way home. In the end, he just cried out, Help me! Help me! I'm completely lost! He made a terrible din. The young elephant was playing in the water and heard him and thought to himself, Oh dear, I can't let someone suffer like that. I'd better go and help him. But when he approached the forester, the man started to run away in fear. Don't be frightened, said the elephant. Just tell me why you're upset and I'll see if I can help you. Oh, said the forester, I've been lost in these woods for seven days. I am completely bewildered. All I want to do is to go home to Benares. Don't worry, said the young elephant. I'll take you home. Just sit on my back and we'll find our way. So he bent down and the forester, now not frightened, got on his back and they made their way slowly to the edge of the forest so the forester could see his way back all the way to Benares. Now, this man was actually not a very good person. Immediately, the elephant started to carry him. He paid particular attention to the route and marked some of the trees so he could remember his way back. And when he got back to Benares, as it happened, he heard a ceremonial drum being beaten. An announcement was being made. The king's elephant is dead. We need another one. If anyone knows of one, please inform us immediately. Now the forester knew just where to get one. So he went to the king and told him, I found a perfect elephant for you. He's white all over and <laughs> very well trained. I think he implied that he had trained him. I will bring him to you. Very well, said the king. So he ordered a great group of followers and some highly skilled mahouts or elephant trainers. And they followed the forester's tracks right into this thick and dense forest. And the forester took them right up to the cave and the lake where the elephant was bathing. Now, when the young elephant saw them, he knew what was happening. And he knew he could trample all of them if he wanted to, but he chose not to. If I trampled them all, I would have given way to anger. So I wouldn't really have won. I'll go along with them and I'll just do what they want for the moment. I will not get angry even if they attack me with swords, I'll stay calm. And so he just stayed there and bowed his head and waited, immovable. The wicked forester grabbed his trunk and it was like a beautiful silver rope and he just pulled the elephant all the way back to Benares. Now his mother sensed what had happened and she was very unhappy. She had food and she had plenty of water, 
but she did not have her son to look after her and to pick the fruit from the high branches of the tree. So while the Mahouts were on their way, the king had the city decorated. He had flowers hung everywhere and wonderful food laid out, all to welcome the new state elephant into the city. But when he arrived, the elephant did not eat a thing. Oh, what's wrong, said the king. Do you not like our food? The elephant explained. He wanted to be with his mother because she needed him. My mother is blind and even now she's probably beating the ground with her foot, grieving for me, he said. I find her her food and I look after her. That's where I belong. The king was moved. You must go free, dear elephant, he said. You're looking after your mother and that is where you should be. So he set him free and when he arrived to see his mother by the lake, the young elephant went into the lake and joined her there, but she couldn't see him. So he sprayed water all over her and splashed her like he used to do when he lived there before. Oh no, it's raining, she said. Where is all this rain coming from? And I have no sun to look after me in this terrible rain. Don't be frightened, said her son. I am back. When I told the king that you needed me, he simply set me free. What a great and just king, said the mother. And sure enough, he was. He turned out to be just that. He built a little town quite near the lake and he used to stay there sometimes and then he'd go and visit them and he'd bring them some food and ask them how they were doing and just pass the time of day with them. And when she died, the young elephant decided that he would like to live in a monastery away from the lake and with people who were practicing the Buddhist path. So he decided to go there and the king used to visit him there too. And back in Benares, he had a statue made out of stone to commemorate the loyal elephant. And from that time on, there was always an elephant festival in Benares, remembering the kind and loyal elephant who was willing not to show anger and to wait for the time to speak when he could be set free. So this is the perfection of kanti or forbearance, the ability to wait until the time is right.